Hey what's good guys, it's Zach with Android Police here at Google I.O. 2017. I went to see what Volvo had in store as they've teamed up with Google to integrate Android into their infotainment system. So let's go ahead and check it out. So uh, what we have here, this is a V90 cross country um, vehicle from Volvo. And uh, this is an Android operating system running in the vehicle powering the infotainment. So in this case, uh, we had Android Auto before where you take the phone, you plug it in and you kind of get the projecting from the phone. In this instance, this is literally Android operating system in the car with all the applications powering the infotainment. Um, so I'm gonna walk you a little bit through this uh, so you can kind of get a feeling for uh, how this functions in the car and what are the features that we want to enable uh, for the users so they can basically navigate the road safely, if you will, and comfortably while having ability to access the application and the world around them. So this is the Census UI, uh, which is Volvo's. Um, they've taken it on the top of the Android operating system. And as you can see, it has a couple of different functions. The status bar, which is normally what we would find on Android on top, giving you signal strength, giving you time, and etc. Um, on the bottom, we have the um, HVAC. And these are the kinds of features that you would normally find in a car that should always be accessible. So, for example, if we were to turn on the air conditioning in a few seconds, the air conditioning is going to start turning on and we'll see the air blowing um, through the vents. Uh, this is controlled fully through Android. An application has been developed in Android by Volvo. If we turn it off, we'll see the air stops going through. If we swipe to the left, uh, there's a slew of features that, that are going to be built for the vehicle, uh, such as, for example, exterior side, ch holding, charging, um, headrest fold, and etc. Um, if we go to the right, you get access to the applications. And in this case, we have Spotify, Pocket Cast, Maps, Pandora, and Audible, just to name a few. Um, but this is the home screen. If you were to start a car, get in, the home screen that you would see here has four tiles, uh, navigation, music, phone, uh, and the third-party application studio in this case. The reason why these are on a home screen is because normally user cares about these kinds of things while they're driving. So for navigation in this case, uh, we have Google Maps. As we can see, these are normally Google Maps that you would quote unquote find on your phone, except they've been a little bit modified to kind of fit into this vehicle, meaning it's a night, um, night mode team, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but you also get access to things like if you were to, you know, if we were to run out of gas and we click on categories, let's try this again. There we go. And you were to load up gas stations, you would get, all the gas stations that are located around you, the price uh, in each one, how far is it, and etc. And all of these things are also available on the phone. So if you were to search something on your phone, for example, I was going to the hardware store, you would get things like time until it's open, navigation, how long it gets there, and etc. Which is really nice because if you use the phone map, or maps on the phone, you get into a car, Google Maps just continue to function directly right. in your vehicle. Right, right. Second thing is third party applications. Um, in this case, we have Pocket Cast. If we were to start playing it, uh, First, there we go, it starts there. We can see that through the speakers, it starts playing. You can control it using the hardware buttons, as we can see on the bottom here. So if we press pause, it's gonna pause it, stop playing. We also see the standard <laughs> uh, Molly yep. bar that you always find in Android. Yep. Um, um, and also things like steering wheel buttons in this case. So you can control volume where steering wheel buttons, which is also really, really nice because as a user, while you're driving and focusing on the road, you might not want to focus on the screen uh, over here. Right. All third-party applications are using Media Browse and Media Session APIs, which means they don't have to design the template. They just basically send the metadata to the car, and then Volvo basically respects few things. For example, as you can see, they respect the icons for the applications. In this case, like Audible mm -hmm. has their own icon. If we were to load up uh, Pocket Cast, we see the Pocket Cast icon. Also, the library that we see over here, this all comes from the Pocket Cast themselves, which is important. Um, and same thing, if we do Spotify, we'll see that the library comes actually from the Spotify itself. Um, phone, these are, uh, so the phone itself is probably the only feature that we have connected to the actual phone through Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. uh, why, when you come into the car, a lot of people's phone numbers tied directly to their, uh, to their phone. But we have things, for example, through PBAP 1.6, we can see we load up the icons, meaning these are the, the you can see who it is. Mm -hmm. You can also get the names, recent phone calls, and we keep calling the same person, Anna Edwards, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have to who that is at some point. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, 
you also get things like if we close this you can also dial so i mean this is a functional system so nice uh you know if we do this and we dial out we'll see that it's actually using the phone to dial out and start ringing so the last thing that we did not demo yet is how do you use assistant while in a car uh so at the keynote there was a lot of talk about assistant as a platform, meaning how do we bring actions on Google? How do we bring the developers to develop a lot of different things? And how do we make assistant available across surfaces? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we did was we did integrate assistant in this vehicle, which does a couple of different things. One is control HVAC via your voice. Um, and I'll demonstrate that. And the second one is demonstrating how it controls potentially your home devices. In this case, we have Nest thermostat, uh, lights, and a couple of different things. Those are Philips Hue lights. Mm -hmm. um, so the good news is developers only develop for Assistant. All we did was bring Assistant into the vehicle and everything just functions via cloud. Cool. So if we would do the simple things like, okay, Google, turn the lights in the living room off. You got it. Turning two lights off. And I know this is usually hard to capture on camera, but turn I'll do it one more time. Okay, Google, turn the lights in the living room on. Okay, turning two lights on. And we can see that they turn on. So this is all purely through cloud and connectivity. So this is not something that uh, we did via Bluetooth or just because the things are close to each other. So you could do this while you're on the road. As we talked at the keynote, we can also recognize people's voices and use recognize people's voices, but that means that we can know who's speaking and the kids in the back are not gonna play around with right, your lights. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you can also do things like change the temperature. So you can say, okay, Google, change the temperature in my living room to 75 degrees. And we're going to see the okay, Nest thermostat the living room to is going to basically degrees. turn on and start changing the temperature to what it is. Um, so other things we can do is we can do, for example, things like change the temperature in the car using natural voice, if you will. So we can say, OK, Google, make it cooler in the car. Sure, there turning the air conditioning on. So we can see the air conditioning at this point has turned on and we're using make it cooler and I'm going to talk about like even when it's loud like this we can we can see the OK Google works well so turn is it already recognized it <laughs> OK Google make it warmer in the car so one of the things we're working on with the partners is to really kind of think even simple things like turning the air conditioning on and off how it functions meaning people want to make it cooler they want to make it warmer in the car they don't want to necessarily set it to 65 degrees right right and as you have multiple passengers and multiple people in a car we can recognize from which seat the person is talking to and we can actually decide what does it mean for the person to make it cooler or make it warmer mm -hmm. so if you have multiple functions you might say hey in order to make this person warmer we might turn the for example their seat on and warm them that way rather than turning everything like air conditioning and everything in the car right so right. with that that, dem that concludes the demonstration and one last thing it's <laughs> a little bit of a challenge I want you to sell me on this idea in one sentence. <laughs> so one sentence, you're going to be able to use all the applications you want in the car in a safe, efficient manner at any time, the way you would normally do anywhere. Cool, I like that, excellent. So what do you guys think? Is this something that you'd want in your car? What do you think of this software? And are you looking forward to more manufacturers teaming up with Google? But anyway, that does it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll talk to you guys later and thanks for watching.